to give her congratulations and thank her for for her efforts uh, mm -hmm. and what she did. Uh, and I want to thank you all too for your continued effort and continued support uh, as we attack this issue uh, pertaining to uh, the State Highway Administration, MDOT District 3 office, uh, as we uh, deal with the trash uh, that we're constantly seeing on our roads. Uh, there's we. I know I've seen some movement and I've seen some changes. And so I, I do appreciate knowing that some of those changes uh, are there. Uh, but before we get to the action items and then open it up to the community, I just want to give you a couple of updates uh, in terms of the legislation that I put forward. And uh, thank you to everyone uh, who showed up to testify uh, on behalf of the bill. Uh, I truly appreciate it. This is what we talk about when we say the community comes together and we need the community at the table. Uh, unfortunately, I know a lot of people had to wait for a long time. That's just one bad part about Annapolis is uh, depending on where the bill lands in the schedule, you can be on on hold or be up here in Annapolis all day, depending on where the bill lands on the schedule. One of the unfortunate uh, parts about it is just how the schedule is laid out and when people can actually get in to, uh, to testify on that particular bill. Uh, but want to thank everyone for that, for showing up. Uh, since we've had the bill hearing, there's been a lot of back and forth. Uh, I've had uh, direct conversations with the governor. I've had direct conversations with uh, the new uh, secretary uh, for transportation, Paul Whitefield. I've had direct conversations uh, with uh, with the governor's staff pertaining to this issue. And uh, one of the things the governor expressed and the staff expressed to me is wanting to have time to clean things up within SHA and uh, have the ability to to have their folks. Uh, reconcile things and fix some of the uh, the inaction that's been taking place. And one of the first things they did was added $30 million to the budget. Uh, due to all of our efforts on this call, added $30 million to the budget to make sure that goes towards additional dollars going towards cleaning up the roads throughout the state of Maryland with a particular focus on Prince George's County. And that came for our efforts. When we come together as a community and make noise, we actually get results. Another thing that came directly from all of our efforts, and, and I'm not saying it's all of ours, this is uh, the Prince George's County community coming together saying, we have had enough and we wanna see some changes. The State Highway Administration has done an operation clean sweep, which they're continuously doing right now. And so far they've picked up over 100, 120 tons of debris on state roads. 120 tons. And so when I say that's a phenomenal, a phenomenal uh, feat right there, 120 tons. The unfortunate part is even though they did 120 tons, there's still probably 450 other tons of trash still on the roads. So we still got a lot of work to do, but we got to give credit to where credit is due. Uh, MDOT is stepping up to the table. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, we've, uh, in these meetings, asked that they do before and after shots so we can see what did it look like before and what is it looking like now? And because, you know, for a lot of us, we don't believe it until we see it because it looks like as we're driving down the road, sometimes the roads aren't getting clean, but if they can showcase what they're doing right now, what you see on the screen that's being shared, uh, we can see that things are actually being done. And so I want to I want to thank the governor and his office uh, for 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 doing what they're supposed to do and, and focusing in on on addressing this issue. Uh, one of the other uh, byproducts that came out of out of this bill uh, was trying to get you know trying to get information to be shared uh, with us when it comes to the budget. How are these dollars being distributed? We got 30 million additional dollars. How are those dollars being uh, distributed down into Prince George's County and to our district shops in comparison to the other district shops? You know, what does the schedule for cleaning look like? So State Highway is committed uh, in a letter that we have right here in front of us. They've committed 
uh, that they will have a public facing dashboard for us by October 1, 2023. So put that on your calendars, folks, October 1, 2023. They will have, uh, yeah, they would have a dashboard for us to be able to see all of the things that we're requesting. And this was all done without legislation, folks. The power of the people coming together was able to get an agency to do something without actually uh, passing any legislation. So uh, thank you all. But we still have to continue to move forward and hold uh, the agency itself accountable when we see issues and see problems. And I do see some of the county folks on the call as well. So I want to thank them for being here because it's a coordinated effort, Corporal Wolford, uh, who is a cops officer in, our, uh, in the Forestville community. He's uh, done uh, road cleanups with myself and uh, that was led by uh, our good pastor on here, John Richardson, uh, cleaning up uh, Route 4. And so I want to congratulate him and thank him for being on the call with us. And I see Captain Hansen, uh, his boss, is on call. Uh, because not only are we focusing on our state roads, but we know our county roads are an issue as well. And I, I know I've been seeing Mike Johnson, the head of DPWT, on our calls as well. So I want to thank him for being a part of our meetings uh, to be able to collaborate and get us answers on the county-specific roads. Uh, but in short, the bill that I put forward the bill did not uh, move forward, but we got a whole lot of traction out of it. We got $30 million. We got uh, a dashboard that should be done by October 1 that'll give us all of the data points that we're looking for. Uh, and we have an Operation Clean Sweep that's taking place right now. So I don't know about how y'all feel, but if y'all go off mute and you clap your hands and let me know if y'all think that we, we moving into a proper direction at this point. <laughs> Yes. 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 Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Additionally, additionally, uh, you know, Reverend Richardson had brought this up a couple of times, and I didn't have an answer for him until uh, recently. Uh, he brought up about the roaming cameras and uh, how we can start, you know, capturing people uh, who are dumping trash within our communities. And, and hold these folks accountable. And so I had a meeting with the county exec's office and they do have roving cameras out now. And uh, there is a case that has uh, moved forward uh, where an individual was caught dumping. They caught him on camera. They have his vehicle license plate. They have a picture of him so they can match that picture up against his driver's license. And that person individual uh, is being prosecuted. So the state's attorney's office with the police department alongside the uh, county execs DPWT office are uh, working in tandem to hold folks accountable. So, uh, I, you know, I told all three of them, you know, I love to see uh, us make example of some of these folks on the news uh, so that when we prosecute these folks, it'll put uh, the fear of dumping trash in our communities mm -hmm. and every other person who thinks they can do that and come into our neighborhoods and destroy it. So give a round of applause to the uh, state's attorney and to the county exec and to our police department mm -hmm. for that there. Mm -hmm. for sure, you know, I, I want to thank them publicly for, for those efforts. But as I stated, as I stated before, uh, with all the good news and all of the great things that we do have going on, there are still problems and still issues. You know, uh, my staff had asked me earlier today, you know, we're getting results. Do we still need to meet? And I say, yes, we do. Because at the end of the day, uh, there are going to be issues and problems that we see on our state roads that MDOT may miss, that SHA may miss, and we want to bring attention to these problems and these issues so that uh, the good folks like Justin, uh, who's been a huge uh, help to us, can address those issues and concerns within his district office and uh, make sure that they close out those gaps that, uh, that we're tired of seeing and uh, see the change that we truly believe we need in our county. So Justin, thank you again too for uh, for your efforts. And uh, we're gonna continue doing this, Justin, until we see no trash at all on the community roads in our uh, neighborhood, so. Okay, thank you, Miss Judy. 
All right, and I'm gonna hold questions until okay. until we get through uh, get through the actions from uh, from the previous week. Can uh, Tasha or Becca? Can one of you uh, share the screen from the actions from last meeting? And Justin, you can go ahead and uh, start going through each one. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Delegate Charles, thank you for the introduction and going through all that. Um, I want to hit on a couple things you said real fast. Uh, I can attest that the litter dashboard, um, our office of maintenance is actively heavily working on that. Uh, we just got word through a statewide management uh, meeting that that's coming. Um, they're working on the design and it's going to kind of mirror our um, snowplow um, program right now where you can watch where the plows are um, along with providing a ton of information about what we're picking up, where they're at and things like that. Um, you did mention the cameras. Uh, we also have just been given access from our Department of Homeland Security for SHA. Uh, we have a couple of cameras that we're going to be bringing in. Um, we're trying to identify the locations now to remove or I'm sorry to put in for the places that we're having problems with removing debris, um, specifically tires. And they're also going to be set up for graffiti as well, because that's that's a known problem across the county, um, especially on 495. Um, regarding the meetings, I would like to keep having them as long as we can. Um, you know, even when you're governor in a couple of years, you know, we can keep having the meetings if you have time. But I like to hear from the community. That way we can address directly what is going on. Um, and it is a great benefit to me to hear from the community. That way we can prioritize the things that we're doing. So with that, I thank you, uh, Delegate Charles, and we can go through um, some of these areas. All so, right, I'll, you go ahead and take the lead on, uh, on okay. going through the actions, Justin. Okay, um, for the 202 and White House Road with the commercial tractor trailers parked overnight, uh, we are in contact with state police on that. Um, while it stated we do have no trespassing signs, we are going to update those signs as well as add no parking signs out there, update all of those. Um, and then it will be turned over to the county or state police um, to deal with those issues. Um, Branch Avenue and Schultz. Uh, we're still working on that. The park and ride uh, locations. It is 495 and 95 of the way stations. Um, there are also the 301 way station as well, um, where trucks are allowed to park overnight. Um, this, this is not a issue just at Branch and Shots. We're having them almost any interchange you pull off. You're either seeing tractor trailers parked up at the top of the ramp, um, somewhere around the bridge or overpass. And now we're having the problem where they're actually dropping the trailer and leaving it. And the truck goes away for the weekend or what have you, and the trailer sitting out there. Um, once again, in conversations with state police, uh, the issue with that is that with the no parking signs, um, I think we briefed on this last meeting, however, with the no parking signs, they have to be not parked for a specific amount of time per state police uh, before they're allowed to act. Um, we're working on the language for the signs for that to install in all of the areas that we're having problems with the, the illegal parking. All right, state maintained roads. I'm assuming this is uh, general damage. We're caused. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's a remaining issue. Um, this is talking about when there's a vehicle accident or just a vehicle strikes state owned property, um, kind of what the process is to get that fixed. Um, for those who weren't at the meeting last time, we do have a process in place where we get accident numbers uh, from Prince George's County Police, Maryland State Police, the local municipality police departments, um, if there's an accident number available. And then we go through the insurance process and actually bill for the repairs of these items as long as they're state owned. Um, the two big ones are guardrail um, and lighting. Um, most of the, the struck fences, I mean, stuff like that, or the signs, um, a lot of that gets mixed, especially when these accidents are at night. I mean, a lot of the officers, I mean, you can't even see the sign is down or it's knocked 200 feet away or what have you. 
So that is a work in progress. Uh, we are working on getting, we used to have stickers um, that would be given to the police departments to where when there is an accident, they can actually put the uh, sticker similar to the one where like if you are abandoned vehicle on the side of 495, they'll pull up behind you, MSP will put a sticker on that puts the, uh, the case number on. It gives us information about like the date, um, the case number, what agency is actually handling the case. And that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, we haven't had those stickers in a while, but we are, our traffic division is looking into getting those for us to use again to help with getting reimbursables. Um, the exit 15 and Harry S. Truman off ramp, um, that is a, a light issue. And I'm going to, I got a couple of things to go over with lighting. So I'm going to, we'll skip that and I'm going to address all lighting um, in our area in one piece because we got some different things that we're doing with lighting that I want to make sure everybody's aware of. The, you go, yeah, the, the light installed at Route 5 and Earnshaw, um, the traffic signal being removed. So that is a concern of a lot of citizens um, and residents of Prince George's County. And what I have found out is there's no decision currently to remove the light. However, there is talk of removing the light. Um, so it seems that your concerns of the light being removed uh, are founded. They're not rumors. Um, I haven't got to the reason why or how far along in those discussions they are. If somebody can throw in a chat, if that's one of your specific concerns, um, I will make sure that we get that issue. At least I can give you information on which way we're leaning and the reasoning behind it. Um, as well as find out an opportunity for you to provide feedback to our traffic division um, if you're concerned with that light being removed. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> um, so 373 um, Piscataway and Livingston drivers avoiding the potholes by the water tower. I think that I believe is Mr. Mitchell. Is Mr. Mitchell on? I don't see him. Um, the shop was supposed to repair that. I was going to try to get it confirmed with Mr. Mitchell, but I will <clears throat> follow up on that tomorrow with the shop and ensure that whatever they've done um, is held and they're checking on that repair. Littering and trash. Uh, hold that for one second because I'll also talk about that with lighting. Um, two big things that we're doing right now. The Central Avenue ramps, the dirty ramps, is, um, that's similar. That's the, the littering. Exit 13, road lines need to be repainted. So all of the road um, line striping issues that we've identified in our District 25 meeting, um, and I have them written down if I find a page, but there's a couple of them, like the traffic circle, um, the ramps off 210. Um, those are all scheduled to be done in between now and our next meeting. Um, our contractor is coming in. We've had a, a spring meeting with them to go ahead and get started. And they are doing a tremendous amount of not only repainting or restriping, depending on what the, the material is, those lines. Um, they're also gonna be doing a lot of refreshing of crosswalks um, down on five, four, um, Silver Hill Road, 202, 214. Um, we're trying to get all of that upgraded. All of that is thermoplastic, it's not paint. So. That's what it's gonna get replaced with. Um, and they're coming in to take care of that. Uh, back to lighting, so we'll go ahead and discuss that. Um, all lighting, we have, as everybody's aware, a lot of lights out. Um, and it's for various issues. And we've kind of gotten overdone because we've had supply issues. However, the supply issues are no longer really that much of an issue. We're starting to get all the things that we need to fix the lighting in. However, because we haven't been able to fix lighting for an extended period of time, as well as the infrastructure being completely outdated, um, there's a lot of problems with the lighting. So what we're doing is we're working on getting our crews to the roads that we know we have citizen or community concerns about. We're also trying to piece those back together and get lighting back up in those areas. Um, it's an extensive process to get this fixed. Uh, extensive troubleshooting because we have a lot of breaks. 
So the, these lights have been up for an extended period of time. Um, all of them were hand trenched. Uh, so all of the conduit that they were ran through is breaking. They're just moving the lines to fix the lines. They're breaking further down the line. And we're having a lot of like, splicing issues and just aging um, component issues. So what we're doing, um, our district engineer, as well as myself and the, the ADE, uh, my position for Montgomery County, uh, we've been having meetings with our traffic division um, for statewide traffic division. We're looking at putting out a capital project to actually, our thought is to completely redo uh, the infrastructure necessary for the lighting system. Um, we're gonna try to tie in actual new lighting components with that um, and try to upgrade those components to LED, which would actually require less lighting than what we currently have on site and cause less of a, a drain on the, the electricity source. Um, that's a major project. They would actually have to come in directional bore, put no components out. Um, but we are in desperate need of upgrading our lighting system across the county, across the district, and I mean, across the state, honestly. And we're working on getting that taken care of and getting a contract in place to permanently fix the lights instead of piecemealing um, an individual light here or there or a strand of lights. And then as soon as we fix it, the one next to it goes off. So we're working on that. But the big picture for that repair is getting um, a capital project in place to get that done. With the litter, uh, Delegate Charles did bring up the, the statewide litter blitz. Um, We've been talking about litter in every meeting we've had, and I think everyone on this call, as well as Delegate Charles, um, myself, everybody that's been involved in these meetings and in the community meetings is the reason why the state actually did the litter blitz. Um, we were planning on doing that within Prince George's County, and then it came out that the entire state was doing it. Uh, we did our blitz a little bit differently because I pulled in, um, or our district pulled in, crews from outside of the Prince George's County shops to come and assist. Um, they did a significant amount of litter removal. They're still running litter removal through the south side of the county as we speak. Um, that is gonna taper a little bit because we're, we're gonna focus starting next week on starting to mow grass. So while they will be picking up trash and we'll continue our regular operations for trash removal, they'll also be picking up litter prior to mowing the grass um, and hopefully that can be sustained. With that being said, the, the numbers that you got, Delegate Charles, I, I have different numbers. Um, I have us picking up a lot more trash, but the, the litter blitz that was statewide, I believe, was only a week and a half, two weeks long. We're still running ours. So I think that number is a little lower than what, uh, what we have. I want to confirm that before we discuss numbers a little bit further. That way I'm not contradicting anything. Um, but we have picked up a significant amount of trash. I have thousands of before and after photos. Um, I'm going to share. Becca, can I share? Or Delegate Charles? You're available to share. Okay, thank you. All right, so this is some of the, the stuff that we're dealing with. Um, I just found this fascinating because I know I showed um, our meeting tires last meeting we had, and this is probably the worst I think we've ever seen it. Um, it also shows a little bit of equipment that we're using and the people standing down at the bottom trying to pick this up. Um, this is what we're facing, and I think this is what I think everybody on this meeting is fighting for having stopped. Um, and it's absolutely absurd. I mean, that I don't even understand how this happens, to be honest with you. I don't understand who has that many tires, but this is an issue uh, that is actually down off of 202. I forget the cross street that it's at. Um, but this is what we're bringing in through our Homeland Security, uh, the cameras for issues like this. Um, the camera system that we're going to be using is not to be ticketing 
people. It is simply for the, the criminal process of trying to identify who's doing it and um, going the same route that the county is working on right now. So this won't be like a, a litter, you know, catching everybody that's riding down the road, throwing things out the window. This will be set up at known locations like this to where hopefully we can catch somebody doing it. I see in the chat, this is 100% a business that's doing this. Um, I don't want to ping anybody out there because everybody has reputable businesses, but my guess is one of the tire, the small mom and pop shop tire places that you can get the $25 tire put on your car. Um, they're solely doing this to avoid paying the, the scrap tire removal fee. Um, I'm sure Prince George's County DPW, I mean, we pay that. We have to deal with the the permitting for that. Um, these other companies should be dealing with it as well. But tires have to be properly disposed and it costs a lot of money. So that's why this has happened. But it's just amazing to me that, I mean, probably three, four, five thousand 5,000 tires sitting there and the time it takes to throw those tires over, like somebody has to see this stuff going on. Um, and that's where I think we need the help, honestly. Um, I'll bring one more thing up regarding the litter. So this is uh, the spreadsheet that I, I displayed last meeting. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen this or were on the last uh, month's meeting, this is the spreadsheet that our Upper Marlboro Maintenance Shop is keeping and it documents where their crews are every day, um, specifically the crews that are removing litter, um, as well as debris removal. We count those as two different things, um, inmate litter removal and illegal sign removal. So any of the stuff that we wanna get off the road is pretty much covered in here. Um, it has locations, dates. Hey, Justin, uh, we don't see your screen. Okay, hold on one sec. How about now? Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, we have an internal mile point system. It kind of documents where those locations are, the direction, uh, right shoulder, median, the quantity and tonnage, uh, the amount of team members we had out there, the amount of equipment we had out there, um, as well as any service requests through our customer care management system um, that's associated with that specific area to remove the, the litter. Since last meeting uh, was on the 26th, and I know this is probably hard to see, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I just wanted to show you guys what we're documenting. But um, if you can see my my mouse, Sunday, February 26th. So since that time, um, you know they've done all of this, and you see the various routes that they've been on and the amount of time. Um, this is the spreadsheet that Delegate Charles requested um, to start documenting areas so that we can somehow correlate the data into knowing problem locations and eventually trying to make an impact in those locations. Um, this is a direct result of his request for that. So um, back in Delegate Charles, I will send you guys that the way you have it, um, the updated for the month. It does stop at March 20th. We haven't got last week entered in yet. Um, so it's one week behind, uh, but that information will be coming. Now, this is great. I appreciate that. This is a uh... I'm seeing some some heavy areas where like Crane Highway, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue collected 13 tons, uh, uh, 20 on 301. Yeah, this is uh, 19, yeah, Crane Highway in different areas. Yeah, um, um, a lot of Branch Avenue. Yeah, speaking of Branch Avenue, I, I was in Temple Hills the other day, uh, Justin, and and uh, I, I was coming on, the, going to the on ramp, the off ramp to take you to Branch Avenue from St. Barnabas Road, uh -huh. 414. And it was so much trash over there uh, in Temple Hills on that road that it was it was disgusting. You said uh, you're a branch and St. Barnabas? So, yeah, St. Barnabas off ramp uh, close to, uh, what's this, like right by Iverson Mall by 28th Avenue. It. Yeah. The on ramp uh, right there uh, going towards uh, Branch Avenue. It was so much trash uh, over there. It was uh, it was disgusting. 
Understood. I'll make sure. I mean, they've been through there in the past month, um, but that does not mean by any means that it doesn't look like they haven't been. So I'll make sure they're out there and make sure that the Marlboro Shop is aware of that area. But no, that's a great, a great uh, show. Cause I think uh, a lot of this is about uh, allowing the community to see what's going on. You know, it's so much effort that's taking place, but if we don't see what's going on, you know, especially when we drive down our roads and still see trash uh, all over the place, want to know where the efforts are going. Uh, and, and the fact that you have that now we can start seeing as you uh, move into other areas and folks would be happy to see their, their roads are put on uh, these particular on this uh, spreadsheet so we can account for their community being cleaned up as well. I think you'll have a, a very happy group uh, once everybody just from a quick, you know, show from the show of uh, the reaction button uh, from the sheet. Now, I'm not sure if everybody was able to see the sheet, uh, but did everybody see the roads that are specific to their communities on that uh, sheet? And if you couldn't see it, just say you couldn't see it, and then uh, we'll make sure everybody gets a copy of that. But uh, I want to make sure everybody at least saw their roads. And if they didn't see the roads specific to their community, we want to make sure that MDOT is focused in on those areas as well. Yeah, and I fully support that. I'd rather or much rather have this information and we can have a discussion in the meeting or one-on-one -on -one with any um, anybody that attends these meetings. And if you don't think that we've been in the area, um, I think I've been here long enough. I have nothing to hide. So if we haven't been in the area, I'll tell you we haven't. And we'll appreciate the fact that you pointed it out because we need to be in the area. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's fair game. So we need to be doing our jobs. We need to make sure we're scheduling to go through all the areas. Um, we are human and we will miss things. So I promise you that. So uh, with mowing, I do want to touch base on this real quick. Um, I believe uh, I talked to the RME, who's the resident maintenance engineer of the marble shop. Um, probably 15, 20 minutes before this meeting. Right now, weather pending, um, and I don't know what the forecast is for the next week, week and a half, but they're slated to start. Um, one contractor is going to be getting started on 202, um, starting early next week. And then 5, 4, and 210 will be starting their mowing um, cycle at the end of next week. All with separate contractors, all with independent out there working on separate contracts. Um, and hopefully getting off to a good start, we can sustain that through the summer, uh, fingers crossed, but we have things in place to make sure, hopefully at least with the mowing, this goes a little bit better than it did last year. Um, and we've also emphasized heavily, even though sometimes it seems impossible for these crews to make sure they pick up as much litter as possible prior to mowing, um, there's always going to be things that they're going to miss or not see, and it's going to look like a thousand pieces of debris after they run over it. Uh, but we will address that when it comes, and we're cognizant of that. But we also have litter contracts on each one of these routes as well this year um, who will also be assisting with the litter removal. Um, one other uh, big news thing for us, we currently are having um, some team members from the marble shop trained to operate our statewide, or our, I'm sorry, state-owned a sweeper truck and we anticipate by the end of next week we're going to have an actual crew um, from the marble shop and marble shops area um, which once again is everything south of 50 uh, in prince george's county doing nothing but running the sweeper truck um, so you should see the curb and gutter systems and the shoulders hopefully we get some improvement um, if not we'll readjust but they're also putting out a independent for the marble shop sweeping contract um, that will only be dedicated to, once again, Marble Shop's area. So hopefully that will improve some things, at least with the debris on the, the gutter pans um, next to the sidewalks and, you know, some of our turn lanes and shoulders. So hopefully we'll look forward to that, and I can um, get into that a little bit more next month once we get some things locked in and we start seeing some progress. But you guys should start seeing um, an SHA-owned sweeper truck running around. Um, I would say for the first couple of weeks, try to avoid them at, at all costs because who knows what they're going to be trying to do, but we'll see. So, um, Doug and Charles, I think that's the list. Um, okay. Well, listen, man, Justin, like I said, I want to thank you for 
for your collaboration and for your efforts of being uh, transparent and open. This is all the community wanted, you know, from SHA, just transparency to be able to see uh, what's going on, track it, and uh, to know these things, to be able to hold folks accountable and not, and not from a nasty standpoint, but from a standpoint of this is our community, our tax dollars, and we wanna see how those dollars are being utilized to impact our communities effectively. And, and you've been a partner in this, and so I appreciate you uh, so for you. that. Uh, now, we're gonna now open it up for questions because it's 742, and I saw a couple of folks had hands raised, put them down, hands raised, and then put them down. Uh, I saw Ms. Betty Williams had her hand up uh, earlier, uh, so I want to I do want to give her opportunity to uh, to address the crowd and let us know some of the issues and concerns that she's seen. And then if anybody else uh, has a question, utilize the hand raising function. I see you too, Mr. Brother Redman. I'll, I'll call on you next after Ms. Williams and then whoever else, please raise your hand. Ms. Williams, go ahead. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank everybody for what they have done. My question was in the beginning when you were showing the pictures, I saw pictures that showed Montgomery County and Howard County. Now, I do know that the tires that you showed was in Prince George's County, but I couldn't recognize any pictures that identify with trash that was being picked up in the county. Okay, um, but I have seen improvements, and I'm very thankful for that. Well, thank you. Um, the The photos I showed of the tires were photos that our crews took um, and sent to me. The photos that were at the initial onset of the meeting um, were from a letter Delegate Charles had, and I didn't because I was writing things down as we were going, getting ready for my aspect of the meeting. But um, I think one picture on that was you fifty somewhere on US fifty. Delegate Charles, can you confirm that? Yeah, so this is a letter that came. Uh, this is definitely, like she said, uh, Montgomery County, Howard County. It's a uh, recent cleanup, US 29 ramp at Maryland 103 in Howard County. Uh, and this other one was I-70 near Frederick County. This was uh, the state highway uh, operation clean sweep, just talking in general about the the overall operation that they were doing. And they just so happened to only put uh, folks who probably didn't make as much noise as us in the uh, in the newsletter in terms of uh, the road, the before and afters. It had been good to see the before and after for ours. Uh, right. But I did see some before and afters uh, of some pictures uh, that, that were done within the county, but it's definitely not a part of this, uh, the news, this, uh, press release that came out, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Mr. Redman. Oh, yes. Um, I, I I did hear, and I guess we all heard that uh, you have apprehended, uh, uh, well, a person has been apprehended and is in the process of uh, adjudication, I guess, uh, for littering. And um, I don't know if Maybe I've heard it. You don't you don't have to go through it again. What the punishment is going to be? But this is a way of uh, probably a suggestion and a question to um, what the punishment will be. Whether or not you're going to uh, increase uh, fines or even uh, add to the point of uh, the other 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 uh, to maybe uh, jail time. Uh, I don't know if that's being considered or not. Uh, um, uh, suspension of a driver's license. I don't know. Those kinds of things have been uh, uh, recommended or thought about. But on a, in, in the same vein, we know that um, <clears throat> discipline is, is punishment and reward. So I don't know how this can, but maybe we can catch somebody doing something right and reward them. I'm not sure quite you know what reward. Maybe maybe some kind of voucher, maybe to a dinner, high-end restaurant. I don't know what it might be. The other you know, thing. I saw, Brother Reverend, I saw uh, Reverend Richardson said something in his comments that I think uh, we definitely need to take a look at, which okay. is about the cost of uh, 
the the dumping of tires, like how much it costs. If there is a significant cost associated with it, maybe we need to reevaluate what that cost is so folks won't dump, continue to dump in the community, dump okay. these tires. So I think that's a that was a, a well put observation, uh, Rev. And then we can uh, start looking into that. Uh, and that that's probably that's a conversation with uh, DPWT or DPI or the Department of Environment in the county to figure out uh, how much they're charging folks and then uh, what we can do to address that uh, to offset a lot of this dumping that's taking place. But you know, Brother Redman, I think that's a uh, that's uh, a way for us to address you know, giving people the opportunity to uh, be rewarded by lowering whatever the cost is uh, for dumping or turning in the tires. Yeah, and, and I just want to say, I think he's also talking about um, Mr. Redman rewarding people. Like we see people in our neighborhood take trash bags and they go out and pick yeah. up too. Let's take their names down and give them a certificate and maybe have a day yeah. to recognize people picking trash yeah. up. That's, that's, what I'm, that's what I was referring to. Thank you, uh, then yeah uh you know i'm uh, i'm all for that uh and, yeah. and you know obviously you know it's as uh i've read in one of the one of the uh comments you know we all on this call are the eyes and ears of our community and so you know all of us don't know who's doing what until somebody sees it or somebody tells us that they're doing it so if we see that you know please let me know if you know of anybody that's actually uh, making efforts to clean, you know, I would love to uh, to give them a citation from the state of Maryland and, uh, and and honor them for their efforts and what they're doing uh, to be a, a good neighbor and help keep our community clean. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, I see Larry Bettis hand up. Thank you. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, one, I wanted to find out, and I, I see there are some uh, officers online here from the uh, Prince George's uh, Police Department, but has there been any discussion or will there be any discussion with the Maryland State Police moving forward? Um, as we clean up the county and the roads, I'm hoping that somehow we can uh, get some uh, officers from Maryland State Police on this call so that they can understand what we're trying to do. And then maybe even look at some of the things like what we have here in South County in uh, 210, where the Maryland State Police don't even patrol 210. Maybe we can look at revisiting some of this um, old uh, documents from 20 years ago, um, especially with the shortage of uh, personnel, that maybe we should revisit and have Maryland State Police um, start uh, patrolling um, jointly with our Prince George's officers, especially as we move forward in trying to enforce um, litter or people doing dumping. So I'm hoping that in the future we can get someone from Maryland State Police involved in this effort. And the second thing was that I just recently saw some information concerning hiring, which I thought was great. And maybe that's another thing that uh, Justin can get out to the community, that if they're hiring folks, and I looked at it, it was a pretty decent uh, start starting wage with not a whole lot of educational requirement, that that gets put out in the community so that if they're looking to hire folks, um, they can hire people in the community to help, uh, you know, uh, be a solution, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, part of the solution. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Bettis. And uh, I actually just saw just saw a question because that actually came up uh, came up some time ago uh, in terms of this MOU with state police and uh, Prince George's County Police Department. And so I, I do owe some. Uh, I thought we I thought we had started talking about that, Tamara, but uh, but I know we, we need to close the gap on that piece, especially right now with uh, the transition of a new uh, superintendent for the uh, State Department of Police coming on board, uh, depending on when Governor Moore uh, puts his new person in. Uh, we definitely need to uh, to readdress that um, in terms of uh, not just 210, but specific to all the roads. Uh, and Prince George's County. But uh, let, let's circle back on that, Tamara. It's, uh, 
as you see, it's it's a lot always going on, but we we definitely keep remind me on that so we can circle back and address that issue. All right, Miss Queen. Good evening to everybody. Um, sorry, my voice. I just had surgery yesterday, so I may be a little lower than what I'm normally um. But Delegate Charles, I want to say a special shout out and thank you to you. Um, it was last year, about the end of the year in June, that the State Highway came out to a coffee circle meeting and you ran with it and went with all the issues because you attended the meeting. And I say, Nick, you know, handled this and you did it. And I'm so proud of you to have you as my delegate. You started these monthly meetings. And even though we didn't get to pass the legislation like we like to, you ran with it and you did a lot. You, you're getting us information. You've been handling the issues. We have seen a little bit of improvement. Um, so I, I wanted to give you your kudos in this also. You know, Justin and you, you guys are doing a great job too, but I wanted to take the opportunity to give you your kudos. Um, second, I just wanted to say I was out of town for my dad's funeral this weekend. I was in Georgia and um, I sent some to some of the local, um, to Wall and Crystal, but I'm going to share it with you, Nick, and I don't think I had a chance. I may have shared you a couple of it, but I seen the big signs for littering. You see them all through Georgia, but they had companies to sponsor them. I thought that was a good idea. Like you may see IHOP sponsor a litter sign, um, or you may, you know, see just different, you know, JC Pennies. And I think that's an idea if we can get sponsored to say, um, keep Georgia clean, don't litter. We can say keep Maryland clean, don't litter. And then you had the sponsors on there. And it was also because Mr. Wack, um, Mr. Um, Walter, he mentioned this one of the good things. They even had not just a twelve hundred dollar fine; they had sixty days in jail, Mr. Ratman. So when you mentioned it, I thought that was a good idea because they were saying, hey, you know, we catch you littering, you're going to get 60 days in jail also with a $1,200 fine. So I think sometimes, as he stated, if we stiffen the law, um, it may be a little better. And I'm so glad that we are going to finally prosecute someone. But I think one of the things that was said, their name needs to be publicized because to be honest, I mean, I would feel embarrassed if I, go, if I was littering. And now everybody in my family and all my friends and everybody in my job know my name is out there and publicized. Hey, I've been caught littering. I got this fine. They're going to prosecute me. That can be pretty embarrassing. And I know, you know, in other states in Virginia, if you get caught doing minor stuff, they have you flashing across the TV. So I just want to say we got to think of make things harder to make. Just as everyone is saying that make the next person say, hey, I'm not going to do that. So but thank you again. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Queen. Belinda, you. You know, you you are constantly doing so much work in the community. And so we thank you also. And uh, thank you for the acknowledgement. And uh, Ms. Brown. Yes, good evening. And thank you as well, um, Delegate um, Charles, as well as um, members of SHA that, that are on, um, just echoing what everyone said. And you're doing a great job. Um, but Ms. Queen um, made me remember a request that I put into DPWNT as well as the county council about signs. And one sign that I saw in South Carolina actually was a sign and I'll have to send it to you, uh, Delegate Charles, but it was a sign that told residents not to encourage panhandling and that, and mm -hmm. the sign um, mm -hmm. says do not, mm -hmm. um, Encourage pain handling. Here's a number where you can uh, send persons who need um, resources. And the reason that I'm mentioning it on this call is because I've noticed, particularly um, along Branch Avenue under the underpasses at Woodyard and Allentown Road, that we have a lot of panhandlers. And what they tend to do is they have their bottled water, they have some food that maybe someone has purchased for them and given to them. And then they end up dumping that trash in the median where, the, where they're panhandling or under the um, Branch Avenue interchange. And so um, perhaps uh, because we know that Woodyard is uh, Maryland 223, and I think Allentown is uh, 414. Um, there are also state roads that one of the things that we should be doing is not encouraging panhandling, but uh, providing the number, uh, maybe a QR code, some kind of uh, a, 
some kind of website or wherever where we can send those persons and refer them to for services. And so the, that could be another sign. But I thought when I saw it, I took a picture, I sent it to the county council, I sent it to DPWT, but um, I mentioned it on this call because where I'm seeing most of it is actually on state roads. Definitely. Can we add um, Pennsylvania Avenue and 214? They do it on Central Avenue and on Pennsylvania Avenue also. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Let me uh, look through uh, some of these comments in the notes. Hey, Delegate Charles, I got one for Ms. Chambers, who you're probably going to get to in a second, but um. So I want to let you know, I saw yours, and I'm still working on that with our office of structures to get that uh, the burial wall replaced at the park. Some tree, uh, you see this from Ms. Harris. She saw some trees down on Route 5 and uh, Woodyard. Is it Woodward or did you mean Woodyard, Ms. Harris? Oh, um, Woodyard, Route 5. But it was... Um... It was um, being cut down by the staff, if, if the lack of battle words. I'm sorry, it's like eight o'clock over here. Um, but no, they were cleaning it up. So it was a good thing. It was a good thing that I saw. Okay. And Justin, can you when can you also shoot me that spreadsheet? Because I, I see a lot of folks who couldn't see it. And when you send that to me, what we'll do is share that with uh, with everyone on the email distribution list. Yeah. You, know, you should have it in about 30 seconds. All right. And Becca, uh, when we capture all of the, uh, the notes from the meeting, the actions, and we send out the action list to the community and uh, to Justin, please share this copy of the, uh, of the list that came from Justin as well. Let's see. <clears throat> Oh yeah, Mr. Bettis brought up about the hiring because I did see that you uh, you guys posted that uh, and I've shared it on my uh, newsletter as well about your hiring uh, opportunities right now. How's that coming along? Um, it, it's going well. Um, this is, I think, the third mass hiring event that we've done. We actually did it last Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe, um, where it's an open door. Everybody, anybody in the public can come in. We try to advertise it and get the, the word out there. Um, they come in, apply, we interview them on the spot and go through the hiring process. Um, as long as they pass uh, some drug screening and background, um, typically we bring them on pretty quickly. So in Prince George's right now, uh, we have a, a lot less vacancies than what Montgomery County does. Um, we filled almost all of our um, employee pens for the Laurel and Marlboro shop uh, for our maintenance workers are filled. So now we're just trying to get them trained, get them to have commercial drivers. One sec, Justin. Ms. Okay. Ms. Goodwin, can you go on mute? We have some feedback coming from you. Okay, there you go, Justin. Yeah, so, I mean, it's all going well. Um, I'm also, and I know a lot of people on here probably know Wynton Johnson, um, who is our ASME union president. Um, him and I are working together. We have an idea to try to get into the local high schools. Um, to try to do a program and create a position to where, I mean, the issue is that CDL, I'm coming out of 18 with the CDL issue, they would have to do something other than obviously be a truck driver, but try to get in there early. Um, people that are interested, steer them towards a, a state career, get them training, um, get them on board with what we do and start that process um, as well as mentor and um, try to provide that opportunity. And uh, I think pulling directly from our communities at such a young age would provide an awesome opportunity for us, um, especially if they can start at 18, you know, a state retirement um, benefits. I mean, 18 years old, they'd be making pretty decent money. Um, so we're working on that as well uh, for recruiting efforts. So a lot of things in the mix, but right now hiring wise for our maintenance workers on the ground, um, we're looking pretty good with the vacancy rate. So that's positive. Appreciate that. So I see we had a question from uh, Reverend Richardson, uh, and uh, he, he has his hand up. So this will be uh, him asking a question and me asking him a question at this point. Uh, he asked that uh, we bring uh, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning 
police to the next meeting. And I just wanted to kind of get understanding as to why I kind of get, I get the state state troopers bringing them in since uh, we can see if they can focus on the state roads and we got the police who can deal with uh, county roads. But where do you see park and planning police falling in place? Well, you have, for example, in our community, uh, Berkshire Park, it, it borders uh, Berlin Four, So they should be on this call. They're, they're basically partners just like Prince George's County Police, just like MDOT. Uh, so because that park borders and as Miss Chambers talked about the barriers missing, um, I've taken pictures and reached out to them as well. Uh, so it's important that they are uh, at the table too. That way some of this could be expedited um, as opposed to keep going around in circles. The other, uh, a comment I put in the chat is regarding when, whenever a citizen of Prince George's County um, goes to dump any item using their personal truck, like a pickup truck, they are charged a fee. But if you drive it with your car, you're not charged. And that's something that need to be reevaluated. Uh, I don't think that a uh, county residents is trying to get rid of items legally um, should be charged a fee if they're using their personal pickup truck. It's something totally different if it was a commercial vehicle. Um, so these are some of the things that need to really be looked at um, that could really help change the direct trajectory of our county in terms of uh, the way it looks and the beautification of the county. Reverend Richardson, can I, can I ask you to... Uh... To follow up with uh, Councilwoman Bougay uh, on that, so we can get her get her to uh, move forward. And if or if we got Mike Mike Johnson, are you on Mike from DPWT, or do we have anybody from DPWT? Yeah. Um. Hi, uh, good evening, um, everyone, delegate. And yes, I'm on. Okay. Is there something? Uh, I'm not sure if that falls under your department or what, but uh, changing, you know, working to change that. Uh, structure of payment that uh, Reverend Richardson brought up in terms of dumping with the truck or dumping with the personal uh, sedan. Now, I believe that is a DOE, Department of the Environment, but it would it would probably require also change to the county code to some degree. So, but DOE would take the lead on that, and I could pass that on to Director Crooms that this was raised here, and um, you know, it's probably you would probably could invite her to the next meeting if that if that was the way you wanted to proceed with that. Yep, yep. Uh, and uh, I know uh, Ms. Brown dropped in the chat, uh, and that is correct, yes. Uh, bulk items can be put out uh, once a week. Um, however, if someone is uh, um, renovating their home or anything and they got, and they got a uh, put item, get rid of items before that particular day, and they have a pickup truck. It's just simple, put it in their truck and drive it to the dump. So um, I look forward to uh, some of these things being uh, revised, uh, some of the laws or codes on the book, so that we will not run into these roadblocks in the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Richardson, and, and and you have been a partner on this before I got elected. You know, you were leading the effort on this uh, this Pennsylvania Avenue uh, project when I was just a, a lowly civic association president trying to make sure Four Spring was taken care of. Uh, you were making sure uh, Route Four uh, was safe for all of our residents throughout the Fallsville community was able to walk safely and get the, uh, the type of service we need. So. Thank you for continuing your efforts and everything that you're doing. Uh, you, you're welcome. Well. Thank you for coming on board and uh, joining right on right on in and uh, making a, a huge impact as, as we need um, our legislators involved as well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, sir. And, and, and I'm looking at a, a comment from Mr. Weiss. Yes, sir. Listen, uh, me too. Yeah, I, I I can say that, you know, uh, I'm hoping that there is a point where we the government 
where, where all of the residents, uh, we don't have to uh, get everybody to be the eyes and ears. Things are just happening and uh, the roads are getting clean. We don't have to worry about any of these issues, but that's the problem. Uh, for so long, things have uh, lacked and uh, we have to stay on top of this. And if we don't stay on top of it, nobody else will. And when uh, things are happening or not happening in our community, it is our duty as constituents, not just as elected officials, but all of us as constituents, as members of the community, uh, to call out the ills and the wrongs of what's happening or not happening in our neighborhoods. But trust me, I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, there should be a time where we just walk out the door and everything is already clean. We don't got to worry about any of this. Uh, but right now, that's not that. That's not what's taking place, and that's the unfortunate part. Uh, but you know, these meetings. I hope you have seen that these meetings has uh, showcased the change in action uh, from uh, SHA and the agency. But we got to continue to keep our foot on the gas and not take it off uh, until we see the change that we're looking for. All right. Let's see. All right, uh, Captain Hanson, did you want to talk talk about uh, your efforts here? You're on mute. Yeah, you're on mute still. What about you, Wolford? Can you uh, chime in for uh, for Cap Hansen? Corporal Wolford, did he fall off? Was he still on the call? Corporal Wolford, three zero zero three. All right, I don't want to have to text you, Corporal Wolford, to step in. All right. Uh, Hanson, uh, I saw your text, I saw your message in the group, though, uh, in terms of the Forestville Conduct uh, Unified Enforcement Operations along Pennsylvania Avenue. Though these operations do not occur enough, we are always trying to expand our partnership. I will reach out to Lieutenant White, the commander, uh, Maryland State Police, Forestville Barracks, to invite a representative. So appreciate that. So uh, by next meeting, uh, next month, Hopefully we'll have uh, state troopers here. We'll have a representative from the state troopers. We'll have DOE, uh, Ms. Kroon, and uh, we'll also have uh, Maryland National Cop and Parking Planning Police. Uh, and and Cap Hansen, while, while you're at it, since uh, you got this uh, Rolodex of officers, can you reach out to uh, Maryland National Capital Parking Police too? Parking Planning Police, appreciate it. All right. Okay, now high school apprentice. The county, uh, she had a question about the uh, state county litter campaign. Uh, as uh, Justin mentioned, uh, they are still moving forward with their uh, litter blitz in the county. So that's still taking place. Uh, I don't think the county's uh, litter campaign, their blitz is happening at this very moment, but I know uh, we got Mike Johnson who can kind of speak to, uh, who can speak to uh, some of those issues. And uh, Tasha, it looks like uh, folks can't unmute themselves. I don't know if another button was hit. Is a lot. Okay. Try now. Can, can anybody? Un yep. Can anybody unmute themselves? Now yeah. we can. Now we can. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. That's why uh, nobody was answering you when you were calling them. Nobody could unmute. Okay. I right. appreciate that. Thank you. I saw your text too, Belinda. So appreciate that. All right. So, uh, but we we got through with the about the police issue. 
Uh, we're going to get more folks from uh, the police department. But Mike, can you uh, chime in on what the county litter campaign looks like right now? Oh, sure. Uh, sure, it'll get. Um, so um, we recently uh, completed our eight, an 18-week um, litter blitz which uh, was was um, unprecedented. We had phenomenal results. We picked up 925 tons within that 18 month, 18 week period, and uh, we also um, introduced uh, some street sweeping, some additional street sweeping, which we which we are planning to expand in the county. Um, one of the things that the Blitz uh, taught, uh, pointed out to us is that we were too dependent on a single contractor. So we've recently rebid and have three new contractors working in each one given three districts. So they have smaller errors. It kind of like uh, hedges our risk so that we're not at the mercies of a, you know, the, you know, any particular contractor sort of failing um, so that, you know, we would have continuous service. Um, and then we have better monitoring, which uh, we sort of, you know, mastered in the in, during the blitz activity. So I think that um, really, the first nine weeks of the blitz, there was so much background litter. I'm going to call it that. That you know, we really some weeks we were picking up 150 tons of, of litter just in one week uh, of of collection, and kind of stabilized. You know, somewhere around uh, 20 tons a week, somewhere thereabouts, that's what we should be picking up. So we're using that data, sort of a data-driven approach to make sure that each of the contractors in the different districts are performing in accordance with what we know they should be collecting. Now, until, um, you know, we get, um, I see a lot of good changes coming with, um, the, you know, the police getting on board and, and prosecutors and so on like that. But until that changes, we really have to just stay on top of this and pick it up. Otherwise, the county will really sort of, you know, fall back into the condition that no one really wants it to be in. So I'm I'm pretty happy with the way that things are going. I think and, and speaking with residents, um, I I get a lot of positive uh, commentary from them on how things are looking. And, and, and you know, we're always um, wanting to hear any areas in which we need to improve. But in general, I, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with the way that our litter activity is going. Even though we're no longer running uh, a, a blitz as such, right? We're just uh, continuing on with the the collection that we sort of figured out is the correct quantity to collect. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, Ms. Newman, you had a question. Yeah, actually, my question was about doing a campaign with the schools, as we asked before that the county and the state doing some kind of um, litter campaign in the school system to encourage the students to make sure they don't litter, which in turn will impact the parents because they'll be like, mom, why are you doing that? Why are you throwing that out the window? We learned that in school not to do that. So I thought we were going back to, because I know when the old county exec, Sharon Baker was here, there was some kind of partnership with the University of Maryland in some report, I attended a couple meetings up at um, Kentland, and there was some kind of report that was supposed to come out <clears throat> about that, and we never seen anything after he left office. So, okay. trying to right, do that, something with the school. All right, so that, uh, Justin, and uh, that's a conversation that uh, we need to, to uh, have uh, with uh, we, we're about to uh, go through a, a new uh, CEO search for our school system, uh, but with our school board members and with our uh, current super uh, CEO of our schools, uh, that's something that uh, we we can start having that conversation. Uh, as you as you're aware, it's a lot of lot of moving parts to to trying to address this issue. So. Uh, that's something that we have to re-engage as well uh, and start that conversation about the uh, campaign with the school system. All right. So can I add as the former school board member, we had a campaign like that um, with littering and with um, recycling. Um, your county executive had a big one last year. Um, the summer workers, a lot of them did a lot of campaigning, and that was part of their summer jobs. They work at state agencies. They wrote plans for littering and for recycling. And that may be something she's going to do this year 
because uh, Officer Brooks had this done. I remember going to one as a school board member when they were giving them their rewards and they were telling about the projects and what they wrote about littering and what they wrote about recycling. So she may be doing it this year. So this is a time to reach out because she do have summer workers working on that. That's one of the things that they do do. So I wanted to add that since she was talking about, but they teach it in the school system. They're real big with recycling um, in our school systems and um, teaching littering. But I wanted to say, I talked to Sergeant Charles um, and I sent a text to Captain Ford from Park Police. Um, Sergeant Charles said they would definitely get on next month. Just let them know about it and they'll be at the meeting. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Queen. You're welcome. And uh, let's see, uh, see Reverend Richardson. Before we get to you, Rev, uh, let me uh, see Lavonda, uh, Lavon Reedy Thomas. Uh, I wonder if that was a part of the TNI. There was also a grant. Uh, and so we'll have to uh, check into that, uh, Lavon. All right, uh, Reverend Richardson. Uh, I would like to suggest that there be a partnership um, between Prince George's County Public Schools, um, Department of Public Works and Transportation, and MDOT and or State Highway Administration uh, with coming together to um, introduce or host a public service announcement contest. Um, and for those of you that don't know that I am a media arts, TV production, uh, filmmaking instructor, um, CVPA instructor in, in the school system. And one of the major um, differences that can be made for youth is giving them an opportunity to produce public service announcements regarding any type of behavior that we want to see change. Offer them money. Um, one of my students won $2,000. Uh, it was a PSA contest hosted by the National Road Safety Foundation. They, they have these contests every year. And three of, three of my students um, actually just submitted entries to a contest that they have called Drive to Life. So I strongly suggest that these agencies come together and host uh, a PSA contest, um, offer money, not just 25 or $50, bump it up, $500,000, $2,000. Um, and you'll be surprised at the creativity and the skill set of our youth and what they're able to produce. Thank you. Well, thanks, uh, Rev. All right, everybody, it's 819, and uh, we, we've tackled a lot of topics today. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, feedback, and uh, we're going to update the action list uh, in terms of, you know, what came out of the meeting today. Uh, look, and then we'll make sure uh, we send out the uh, spreadsheet that Justin pulled together, uh, make sure that gets out to the rest of the community. But I just want to give you all a round of applause and thank you once once again for for all of your efforts and uh, thank you so much for uh, helping us get to this point. We just begun, but we got a long way to go. And so uh, thank you all for uh, taking this ride and being on this journey with me. I'm, I'm proud to represent all of you. I may not represent you individually in each one of your districts, but I'm proud to be chairman of our delegation to represent you all. Uh, here in the state of Maryland. So thank you all once again. Uh, and we will be meeting, as you all know, we meet the fourth Tuesday of every month at seven o'clock. The fourth Tuesday of every month at seven o'clock. And uh, hopefully we will have Department of uh, Environment from the county and all of the other police uh, coordinated uh, agencies as well. And so we're going to save the comments from the chat. And then we're going to also... Uh, make sure uh, we get all of this information disseminated out to the community. So thank, thank you, Nick. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. God bless everybody. Great job, everybody. God bless you. Good night. 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 Good
Great what job, you say? everybody. Yeah. I said, oh. what, what, what can get his comment in while everybody's getting on? <laughs> he, he, he could not leave. He could not leave. District 25 night in Annapolis. Oh, yeah. Yes. I just yeah, got yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. So there, there is going to be a change to the location. Okay. Uh, the location that we uh, originally uh, tried to lock in, um, we, we can't do it there now. So be on the lookout for an updated flyer. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so okay. Late. But I better take that okay. with my yeah. shade off. Thank then. you. All right. All right. Thank you, Nick. Good night, Good everyone. Good night. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Nice. Okay. Driving there. Oh, and I see we got Sharma. Sharma Brousseau. Sharma, I didn't even see you in there. Yes, I listened in. Hi, everybody. How you doing, Sharma? Good, good, good. I'll see you. All right. Maybe I'll be on Thursday. <laughs>